Okay, let's do a quick little video on the fact that uh, I said you'd want to be able to make a TS diagram to match something you had a pH diagram for or the other way around or even PV, any of these things. Uh, and I got a question, how the heck do I do that? And so I'm going to do an example. So let's say over here, uh, let's put on the left a TS diagram. Uh, and let's say it is for a ranking cycle. So I'm going to label label this whole thing ranking. And that's my phase envelope, the little blue bubble there. And I also want to be able to draw one. So pH for the same cycle. So I'm going to put my phase envelope here. The phase envelope looks a little different. Recall it tends to look kind of like that. Uh, there's my phase envelope. So now I'm going to draw this. First, I'm going to draw the version I kind of have memorized, right? And I'm going to start in, uh, in order. So from one to two is my first heat exchanger. It's the boiler, right? And we got to remember over here is liquid, over here is vapor. Over here is liquid, over here is vapor. That's nice that those two match here. Uh, and so do I have a good way to know where that's gonna be on the, P, uh, on the pH diagram? Well, let's see, let's think about it. So we know that point one is going to be uh, off in the liquid side somewhere. That's where it's gonna start. And then we also know from the assumptions, flip back, go look at the assumptions for the Rankine cycle. We consider the boiler superheater for the Rankine cycle to be constant pressure. We know there's a little pressure drop in there, but it's, it's more or less constant pressure. And a pH diagram, a constant pressure line is horizontal. So let's just say, I'm doing this without the numbers here, but we're going to do this. Boink. So there's one to two. Now, does it go up at the end like it does for uh, TS? No, because we're at constant pressure. So there we go, HX, constant pressure. Okay, now the turbine. Remember the turbine goes, well, it starts, we pretend it goes straight down to three prime, but really it goes out over here somewhere to three. So that's, that's the turbine. So what's the turbine going to do over here? Well, we know that a turbine, uh, the pressure is going to drop. So we're going to end up at a lower pressure. We're going to end up, I'm making a dotted line to help us see, you know, down here somewhere. Uh, and we also know that we go from a high enthalpy to a low enthalpy, right? So it's got to end up three has got to be left to the left of where two was. So maybe it goes something like that. Now notice, because three, so three here, not on the phase envelope. So here, this three also can't be on the phase envelope. Do you see? Uh, neither of them can be bumping into the blue. OK, so then what happens? Well, then we follow the isotherm back over, and we go until we have Again, one of the assumptions here, it's a saturated liquid. OK, so 3 to 4 has got to be, again, a saturated liquid. Well, that means it's got to be right on that line. And it's also constant pressure. So there we go. And also, coming through the pump, we expect our uh, point 0.1 to be just a little bit higher enthalpy than point 0.4 was. It should only be over a scooch. So the enthalpy change two to three should be a lot bigger than the enthalpy change four to one. Uh, and there you go. So that's how I do it. I have to talk myself through it every single time. Now, uh, you can take a shot at the re refrigerator. Refrigerator is going to be likewise um, on the pH diagram. It is going to be more trapezoidal and have fewer curvy bits to it than it is on a TS diagram. Um, but it's going to look a heck of a lot like uh, the um, Rankine cycle. I'm going to put some arrows on to show direction of travel here. 
right? This is direction of travel. Um, it's very similar, but it's not quite the same. Okay, so I'm going to let you, I'm going to encourage you to sit and think and talk that through, and maybe I'll make a separate video on that. Thank you.